get started, we click on the Commercial Applications tab and then select the Cold Room option. A pop-up will then appear giving us the option to use the wizard to define the Cold Room load or we can manually define this. For now, we'll choose the wizard option. A new pop-up will open asking you to define the dimensions. For this example, we will use the inner dimensions of the Cold Room which are 10 meters long, 5 meters wide and 4 meters high. We now need to define the conditions surrounding the Cold Room. This should be our maximum values, but not values which happen rarely or only for a short duration. For this example, we'll use a surrounding temperature of 23 degrees Celsius, a relative humidity of 55%, and a below floor temperature of 12 degrees Celsius. In this example, we'll also define the cold room as having an uninsulated floor. We then click next to continue. We're then asked which goods will be used in the cold room. For this example, we'll choose vegetables from the drop down menu. We can then input our values for the quantity of new stock arriving each day, the temperature of the product as it enters the cold store, and the total mass of the goods stored in the room. Based on this data, the wizard will calculate the cooling load required to cool down the goods from the inlet temperature to the desired temperature in the cold room. Please note that the total mass in the room is required only for the goods which are respiring such as vegetables and fruits, since in that case the respiration heat load should be added to the load. Alternatively, we can estimate the values for quantity and total mass. In this example, we'll use the estimation tool by clicking on the Estimate Mass from Room Volume button. The estimation is based on the type of goods, the percentage of the space in the room used for goods, and the percentage of goods being replaced each day. We'll estimate that 55% of the room will be used for storing goods. Remember that air needs to be able to move between the goods and people also need to be able to access these. In this example, we'll assume the goods are stored for some weeks, so the goods change each day will be fairly low. We'll assume 2%. If we now click OK, we see that Cool Selector has updated the values for us. We still need to consider the temperature of the goods as they enter the cold room. We assume that the vegetables are pre-cooled so that they are at a lower temperature, but this temperature may not be applicable to your scenario. We then click Next to continue. It now asks us to define the room conditions and the panels used. Storage conditions for the selected goods will be suggested automatically, but we can change these if necessary. Under room conditions, we first define the temperature of the room. In this case, we choose just above freezing of 0.5 degrees Celsius. Now we choose which humidity level we require inside. This will impact the run hours to keep the relative humidity in the cold room. If we change this to, for example, 98% relative humidity, then click the estimate button, the value changes to 11 hours per day. We'll stick with 95% for this example and click Estimate again to update the run hours. For the panels, we'll use polyurethane and for this example, we'll use a thickness of 100 millimeters. We then click Select to continue. The window will now refresh and display an overview of our cold room. The values impacting the heat load are displayed here and can be adjusted if needed. We also have some additional inputs which are not included in the wizard. We need to specify the air exchange from the room as the infiltration will impact the cooling load. We can choose the door openings where the wizard estimates the infiltration, or we can manually specify the air exchange rate every 24 hours. In this example, we'll use door openings. We said earlier that in this example, the amount of goods exchanged daily is fairly low, so we'll select rare from the drop down menu. Under the heat transfer section, we can customize each panel individually by selecting the custom panels radio button. In this example, we'll continue with the standard panels. Next, we can input any additional heat loads. This is important to consider as the refrigeration equipment needs to remove this also. The first input is lighting. The application assumes eight watts per meter squared. But in this example, we'll be using energy efficient lighting, so we'll manually input 250 watts. Next, we have fans, which will keep as default. Then we have the heat given off by people. We'll assume people will be in the room for only one hour per day. We'll also assume an additional 16.5 watts per day from an electrical forklift which is used inside for only a short duration each day. Next, we have the option to include or exclude defrost. For defrost, we have the option to have electric or natural defrost. Natural defrost isn't possible at low internal temperatures, so we'll select electric defrost. The room is rarely opened so we can also assume a low number of defrosts. In this example, we'll assume only one defrost per day. We keep the defrost power and time as default, and then we select next to continue. We can now select a condensing unit for our cold room. 
We start by selecting the region of insulation for the cold room. In this example, we'll choose Europe. We now need to choose which model of condensing unit to use. In this example, we'll choose the Optima Plus new generation. At the bottom of the window, we choose the refrigerant. In this case, we'll select R448A from the drop-down menu and then click Next to continue. In the next window, we can view the operating conditions. The suggested evaporation temperature and superheat values have been calculated for us on the required temperature difference between the evaporator and the cold room. All values in the operating conditions can be edited if needed. The cold room heat loads are displayed on the left-hand side. We can export these values by right-clicking on the table and selecting Export to Excel. In the center of the window, we can select the type of material for the thermostatic expansion valve and the connection type we require. In this example, we'll choose stainless steel and use DIN-EN soldering ODF connections. We then click Select to continue. The application will now display all the suggested components for the cold room. The condensing unit is selected based on your required cooling capacity. All other components will be sized and selected based on the condensing unit found as well as the requirements for the cold room. Danfoss doesn't provide any evaporators. However, the application does calculate all the required values which can be provided to an external supplier for selection of the evaporator. If you need to go back and adjust the calculation, you can do so by selecting the Edit Selection button at the top left. A pop-up will then appear asking if you wish to continue via the wizard or manual input. If you choose wizard, then you'll start the process again, but the application will keep all the previously entered values. These can then be edited if needed. If you choose manual, you'll be able to further customize each individual component. However, you will no longer be able to return to the wizard. Before selecting this option, you are recommended to use the copy selection button in the top right. This will create a backup and allow you to return at a later point in time.